Hi and welcome to a quick demo of my XFM editor. Um, I'm actually doing it on a PC that's got a huge 3440 by uh, 1440 uh, resolution monitor. So you can, that means I can have more windows and you can see more on this than you would on a sort of an average size PC. But that's not really a problem because you, the, the windows just overlay one another uh, when you're using on a smaller screen. Um, one important feature here is this is Biggles. So this is one of the greatest cats that ever lived. Uh, sadly, no longer with us. Um, yes, yeah, so let's get started. Um, uh, if I can actually get that to happen. Uh, yeah, so at the moment it's not packaged, so you have to run it with Python and you have to have all the right Python libs installed. The way to find out which Python libs you've got, if you have Python installed at the command line, is the pip command. If you pip list, it'll tell you which packages are installed. The ones you're looking for to run this are Mido, Pillow and Python RT mid RT MIDI. So if you didn't have those, you would um, uh, whoa, God, I can't type. and pillow. If you do that command on my machine, it'll just say I've already got them. So, um, so to run it at the moment, you have to have pulled the files from uh, GitHub and then just run the xfm.py under Python and when you do that this happens. There's a short delay at the start because it's breaking apart all of the animation uh, f frames for all the controls here. I'm just going to open a couple of windows. So that's the setup window. Now when the, the, uh, one downside of this PC I'm using is it, I haven't actually got a MIDI interface connected to it so it's not listing any MIDI imports and there's only one MIDI output which is of no use so this window for the time being isn't going to be a huge amount of use except we might see some uh, dumped information here and um, this window is the routing window and it will show you the way the patch is set up so at the moment this this is an initialized patch uh, if I just load a patch uh, let's just load something like that one there but virtually nothing changed so but except for the name but if I just initialize it just puts it back to the initialized patch and so the initialized patch it has just OP1 enabled and a full strength signal going to the output this routing diagram gives you an idea of, of how things are set up so for instance if if we change this patch so that now OP2 plays a bit into OP1 we say that the OP2 input uh, to OP1 is increased a bit and this is where we start to use the editor I'm going to click and drag that upwards and well, put it fully upwards and that has now made a connection so there's now signal from OP2 going into OP1 at this level um, oh one thing I'll just stop while I'm here um, it's hopefully obvious that the labels here are above the controls they're actually above the controls so output is that control there rather than being the one above but if that's not entirely clear, what you can do is um, just edit this settings.json and just say that you want to show outlines, switch that to be true, uh, 1E, <laughs> and then restart. And now this time it'll be drawn and all of the animations have all got a white rectangle around them so I'll spring up the windows I had before with that one there and that one there um, what I'm going to do now is I'll just load now because I haven't got a MIDI interface I can't actually get a patch from XFM so I'm just going to load one from disk um, and I've got this one I prepared earlier in true Blue Peter style this is a much more complex patch as this diagram testifies to. Um, as it says, click anywhere, show and hide values if it looks too complex, but it's just to give you an idea of all the routing. So this this has pretty got everything playing to everything and everything has feedback on itself. So um, this is where we start to use the editor. So all of these controls, um, they're all used in pretty much the same way in that they're mouse draggable. So for most of the simple controls if I just drag up and down or left and right it changes the control so let's see if I can put that back to zero no I can't 
Um, one feature of them is, and that's true of all the controls, is you can use uh, left clicks to increment in ones and right clicks to. So if you want, if you get it in roughly the ballpark where you want it, and then do that, you can get it accurately set. Um, so let's put it back to zero, and then that's back to zero. So that most of these controls are um, very similar to that control there. Most of them go not to one two seven, although there's a few that are bipolar. So that goes from minus sixty four to plus sixty three, um, and similarly, I think this mar this mixer level over here that goes uh, from minus sixty three to plus sixty three, and so on. Uh, but most of these go from 0 to 127 you can see some happen now over in the diagram there uh, yeah just talking of that so these lines they're drawn in stipples and that's to try and give you an idea of um, how intense that is so let's see it was op4 to op1 i was playing with so the op1 input to op4 input to op1 so if i make it fully intense then the line is thick yeah, that yellow line coming up from op4 to op1 and as i go down it goes to it's almost invisible at 06 there and there you go I'll leave that there. Well, it's a bit halfway, so. Um, right, so then, as well as the rotary controls, uh, there are these sliders, vertical and horizontal. So they're to form the shape of this ADSR graph. Um, for instance, that is the uh, attack level. So it's a 118. It can go all the way up to 127 or all the way down to zero. And so that control is just moving that point up and down. Similarly, the decay level um, is there, so I can bring it right the way down or all the way up, and so on. And then the actual horizontal position is to do with how long a time each phase is set to be. So if I reduce the attack phase, then it moves like that. So these four controls here and these four controls here affect what's going on in the graph here. Um, these are uh, just button animations so that, for instance, the right left curves, they can be split between line X, uh, exponential, so default line, uh, pitch envelope, that's whether the envelope of the master control is applied to, to this sound or not. Um, fixed is, determines whether this control is either a ratio, so if it's a ratio, it's uh, like how much uh, of the frequency of times of the frequency of the played note it will actually be produced by the, the oscillator. Um, if it's fixed, then it sets a fixed frequency, um, so you can adjust it like this. Now, this, con this control and this control are unusual in that they're in two parts so for instance when this is f f uh, frequency it can go up all the way to a rather curious 9733 all the way down to almost zero um, if you want to try and get it to some accurate value let's try and put it back to 440 so first off if I move it up and down then the upper two digits are adjusted and if I move it left and right the lower two so first off if I try and bring that uh, upper digit so it's just four so I'm bringing it all the way oh sorry I'm going the wrong way right there we are so bring it all the way back to uh, f come on to f oh, I can't do it well here's where you can use the mouse so I'm just going to do that till I get to four and then the lower digits are moved by going right and left so if I just actually should have done that first so set that to 40 and then bring this all the way uh, I'm losing it uh, let's try and bring that back to 40 there we are and then bring this down to oh good lord oh let's give up on that uh, anyway you get the, the idea I, I think I'm going to have to rethink how, how those are controlled um, these ADSR controls over here are just the same as these four, except for the fact that these are bipolar, so they can go positive and negative. So the midline is the zero point. So if I bring that D level 
all the way down uh, maybe take that up so if I try and put that down to the, do that to zero or put that up to a zero um, so there is a mid point and then they go up and down a bit in the way that this can go negative and positive also um, so that's basically all the controls um, I'm not going to try and explain what every control does that that's in the user manual or you need to watch uh, Chris Dodsworth or Chalkwalk's uh, t tutorial videos they'll tell you how to actually form the sounds here um, one thing I'll point out here is that these are actually edited controls so if I want to put my initials in here I'll just see, I'll get that down to a C and then let's go up to a J and then down to an L like it's CGL1 commit. There we are. So that's named the patch. If I now save it, um, it's, well, it's going to be quite small on this screen, but save to patch CGL1.json. So it's taken whatever names here and put the word patch on the front and saved it as a JSON. So now if I initialize it, uh, it all goes simple again. Uh, then if I load, should, should find I've got a patch um, CGL1 there. Okay, I'll just show one final aspect of this. That n normally it uses JSON for saving and loading, and the reason for that is that. Um, okay, let's have another one of those. Um, If I look at something like um, that one I just saved, the nice thing about it is you can, as a human being, you can actually read what that's all about. In fact, you could even edit it, although you have to be sure that you keep the values in bounds. Um, I'm not sure what the program is going to do if you take it things out of bounds. Um, but as well as uh, JSON files. It, this is something I put in for my own debug use but it, it could be useful in that you can actually save sysx files from something like midiox um, and then you can actually load syx files in so that that's done exactly the same thing as if I was connected to XFM and it just sent a patch over um, you know when you do the patch export th this key sequence and so these uh, are then filled in. So that is the actual raw patch as it came from the XFM. But it's in a strange encoding where they've um, taken 8-bit data and they've actually sort of expanded it out a little bit by inserting mask bytes every 7 bytes that um, set it to be 7-bit uh, data with masks. This is the same data after it's all been collapse back so this is actually the data that gets loaded into the edit controls over here <coughs> and then when you edit things when you finally come to say send um, then what it does is it does all of that backwards so it takes the 8-bit data well it takes all the values out of the controls forms uh, a dump like this and then puts it through a 8-bit, 7-bit conversion and that's what gets it to XFM. It also calculates the CRC. And just one final thing to point out is that you can tick this box here and equally when I was editing that settings.json um, it was a settable option. If that's ticked then when uh, an, a sysx arrives from XFM it's automatically saved whatever the name is like this is xfm7 um, it creates patch underscore xfm7 dot json and for the time being that's all I'm going to show here this was just using the big screen so you can see all the windows if I just click these buttons it closes them or you can just exit the windows um, in the next video I'm going to record it on a different PC which has got just a, my normal laptop screen um, but in that case I'll then be able to connect to the uh, XFM and actually send and receive I hope. Um, so that's it for now. Bye.